Okay, so you've probably seen some chatter online, maybe some headlines about the sun. It seems like astronomers are definitely uh, raising some flags. Yeah, are, yeah. There's uh, a lot happening up there, and multiple sources are pointing to increased solar activity. It's quite noticeable. Right. So our goal here, our mission for this deep dive, is really to unpack what all this solar buzz means for you listening right now without getting totally lost in, you know, the super technical stuff. Exactly. Let's try and make sense of it. Basically, the sun goes through cycles about 11 years long. Okay. And right now, we're smack in the middle of what's called the solar maximum. Think of it as the sun being stormier, more active. Mm -hmm. Its magnetic field gets kind of tangled up and flips. Flips like north becomes south. Essentially, yes. Yeah. And that whole process stirs things up, leading to more solar flares, more eruptions, generally a more energetic sun. Got it. And didn't we just have a really big one, an X something flare? We did, an X 2.7 class flare. That X means it's in the most powerful category. Yeah, and the 2.7 number gives you an idea of its strength within that top tier. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory caught it and it came from a new sunspot region that popped up. And that was the biggest one for 2025 so far. That's right. The strongest we've logged this year. So what happens down here on Earth when something like that goes off? Any immediate effects from that flare? There were, actually. Mm. Almost immediately after the flare peaked, NOAA reported radio blackouts. Blackouts? Like everything went silent. Well, specifically high-frequency radio signals. Think shortwave radio, stuff used by pilots, maritime communications, ham radio operators. Reports came in from parts of the Middle East saying signals were disrupted for uh, maybe about 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Doesn't sound too long, but I guess it shows a direct link. It absolutely does. It's a clear example of how quickly these solar events can mess with our technology. And NASA's warning isn't just about these brief radio issues, right? They're talking about potentially bigger problems if this activity keeps up. Exactly. Ongoing activity especially from an active region facing us, raises concerns about broader impacts. We're talking potential disruptions to, well, more general radio communications, not just HF. Okay. Also, the electric power grids. Intense solar events can induce currents in long transmission lines, potentially overloading systems. Right, I've heard about that possibility. And navigation signals, too, like GPS. The disturbances in Earth's upper atmosphere, the ionosphere, can affect the accuracy of those signals. Plus, of course, increased radiation poses risks for spacecraft and astronauts in orbit. Okay, so flares are one thing, but what about the northern lights, the auroras? People love seeing those. How do they fit in? Ah, yeah, the beautiful side effect. That's mainly due to something called coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. CMEs. Okay. These are huge clouds of charged particles, plasma blown out from the sun. Sometimes flares like that X2.71 can trigger a CME, or they can happen on their own. And when that cloud hits Earth? Exactly. If it's aimed our way, Earth's magnetic field guides those particles towards the poles. They collide with atoms in our atmosphere, oxygen, nitrogen, and make them glow. That's your aurora. So the sunspot region that fired off that big X flare, you said it was new. Is it still like, pointed at us? Yes, and that's really the key thing right now. That highly active region has rotated around and is now facing Earth pretty much directly. Uh-oh. So more potential impacts. It significantly increases the odds, yes. Yeah. Any major flares or, importantly, CMEs from that region are now much more likely to be geo-effective, meaning they'll interact with Earth. And it's not the only active spot, is it? I read there might be several. That's correct. Looking at the sun now, the side facing us has, I think, up to five numbered sunspot regions currently visible. It's quite busy. Five? And there's a particularly interesting new region just rotating into view. Early observations suggest it might be uh, magnetically unipolar. Unipolar, meaning yeah. just one pole, like north, but no south. Sort of, yeah. Usually sunspots have paired positive and negative magnetic polarity, like a bar magnet. A region dominated by just one polarity is unusual, and its magnetic structure could lead to different kinds of activity. Scientists are definitely keeping a close eye on that one. Fascinating. And one specific spot, AR40087, I think, there's talk it could cause supercharged auroras. Right, AR40087. It's one of the active regions currently facing us. Because of its position and apparent magnetic complexity, there's speculation that if it produces a strong CME directed at Earth... We could get a really good light show. Potentially, yes. Yeah. A particularly intense particle stream could lead to really vibrant auroras, maybe even visible further south than usual in the northern hemisphere or further north in the southern. Okay, let's pull this together. The sun's basically at peak activity in its cycle. 
We just saw a major X-class flare causing radio issues. The most active sunspot regions, including that x flare one and maybe this weird unipolar one, are now pointed right at us. That sums it up pretty well. So we could see more effects, tech glitches, maybe power grid stress, navigation issues, but also possibly some really amazing auroras. It's a mixed bag, definitely. It highlights how connected we are to the sun, for better or worse. Space weather isn't just an astronomical curiosity. It has real-world consequences. It really makes you think, doesn't it? I mean, just pause for a second and consider how much of our daily life communication, travel, power, finance, depends on technologies that are potentially vulnerable. What would a really big, sustained space weather event actually look like for us all? Something to chew on while the sun keeps putting on its show.